A mixture of common sense and established science tells us that a road bike specific tyre will be faster on a road compared to a gravel tyre and a gravel tyre will be faster on gravel. But by how much? We're going to do some simple experiments to find out exactly what the difference is. And the beauty of gravel tyres and gravel bikes is their all-round capability. With greater tyre volume and more pronounced tread patterns, they give better grip and performance and comfort off-road. A gravel tyre like the Continental Terra Speed is a great all-round performer, but the compromise is increased rolling resistance when on smooth tarmac compared to a tyre designed purely for road performance, like the Continental GP5000. Yeah, right. Let's do some tests. Yeah, Ollie, why are we out here in the rain, though? Because this is a controlled environment with consistent smooth tarmac. Don't worry, though. First test, back inside. <laughs> oh, I like the sound of that. First up, we're going to look at the rolling resistance on the rollers to see that if on a perfectly smooth surface, there's a measurable difference between the two tyres. The interaction of a tyre with the surface it rolls on creates friction. And when we ride, we have to overcome this friction. And, well, the lower the rolling resistance of the tyre, the less friction you need to overcome. Tyre pressure affects rolling resistance, so we're going to perform the test with both tyres at 70 psi and also perform the test with the tyres at pressures more representative of what you would actually use in them. So, 90 psi in the GP5000 and 40 psi in the TerraSpeed gravel tyre. Right, as you might be able to tell, I'm warmed up, but more importantly, the tyres are up to operating temperature, which means, Dr Oliver, we can start the experiment. We can. So Chris is going to try and ride at a target speed of 45 kilometres an hour in the same gear for both of the different runs we're going to do. And then we're going to measure the power required to maintain that speed with both sets of tyres and at the different pressures. This is going to be done using a quark power meter and the Wahoo head unit we've got on the front. Each run is going to be five minutes long on each different tyre and the different pressures. So first run, let's go. Four, three, two, and done. Chris is now going to do the next run, which is at lower pressure, 70 psi. And we would expect that to maintain the same speed, 45 kilometers an hour he did in the first run, he's going to have to put out more power. Yeah. 70 psi, Ollie, five bar for those at Five eight. minutes. Right, are you ready? Go. Can you count me in? Yeah. Three, two, one. Go. 10 seconds to go. Feeling pretty warm. And I can already see the information right in front of me. I happen to know what's going on. Here we go. And stop. Now I've got the tyres all warmed up and I already have an inkling as to how this is going to go. So I think I'm going to have to go into low blow on this test. It's going to be literally a maximum effort to maintain the same speed. There we go. So that's three minutes, not the full five, but that does mean I can repeat the test at 40 psi. Ooh, that was harder than I was expecting. Tires are now down to 40 psi. Got to warm them back up a little bit for the next test. And then it's three more minutes to go. Time for the results from riding on the rollers. Got the science a bit, Ollie. Got the data off your Wahoo. Let's take a look. Right then, should we start with road, 90 psi? Yeah, so this was a 28 millimeter GP5000. Yep, uh, 90 psi, which is roughly six bar, as we discussed whilst we were outside. So, 
For this test, I averaged 299 watts at 45.8 kilometers an hour. And that was basically our bench te benchmark test, wasn't it? Yeah, so then reducing the pressure in that to 70 PSI to maintain that same speed in the same gear at 45 kilometers an hour, you had to do 327 watts. Yeah, it's quite that's a bit more actually, isn't 28 it? 28 watts more. Yeah, essentially 10% extra. Yeah, I mean, that's significant, that's surprising. So let's look at the yeah. gravel tyre at that same 70 PSI. So this is a 40 millimetre wide gravel terra speed from Continental. Well then, for the test, we're up to 449 watts average for exactly the same average speed of 45.8 kilometres an hour. Again in the that's same huge. gear, so the cadence was the same. So final one, 40 PSI in the gravel tyre. Yeah, real world gravel pressure. That one, Ollie, I'm a little bit disappointed with, if I'm honest. I was hoping to do it for a good two minutes, but after one minute 14, I press lap, I'm having not... averaged. <laughs> I'm not surprised. 516 watts. Yeah, but I did go the same speed, 45.8, so at least I got that. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's astounding how much more power you required to do that. But... Yeah, that's a big difference. Well, I mean, this is all well and good, and it does give an indication as to the difference in rolling resistance between the two tyres and the different pressures, but not entirely representative of the real world on this perfectly smooth rollers. No. We need to take it outside, mate. All right then, that feels like I'm gonna get wet today because it's raining. Yeah, we need to find some tarmac. Come on, let's go. We're gonna be performing a roll down test. When I say we, I mean Chris, on this nice, smooth, consistent piece of tarmac. Remember Chris, no pedaling. That sounds like my kind of test, Ollie. I'm going to be doing both runs in the drops in the same position to ensure my aerodynamics are consistent. And we're going to first do the gravel tyres and then repeat the experiment with the road bike tyres. Chris is going to roll down the hill and without using his brakes, see how far he gets when he comes to a stop and we'll measure the difference. You ready? Right, standing start, Chris. You ready to go? Camera's on. I'm going to release you. Release me. <laughs> Rapid. This is undramatic. Hopefully he's going to pick oh, up some speed Building soon. momentum. Come on. Oh, come on. Come on. Normally I struggle to keep up with Chris, but as you can see, without him having to pedal, it's quite easy. 5.8. No, I'm struggling to keep up. Six. 6.3! Oh, oh, we're grinding to a halt. Oh no, it's all gone. All of that hard air momentum. 5. Point, oh dear, that's it. Well, rolling down this extremely steep slope, Chris has managed to get this far on the gravel tyres and I've marked it on the road with this piece of chalk. So now we're gonna repeat the test with the GP5000s and see how far Chris gets on those. Scary speeds, Ollie. They were, they were scary speeds. Round two now, we're gonna do everything the same again, but this time road tires. So we're expecting that Chris is gonna go a little bit further. Guess we'll have to find out. I'm expecting big things here, Ollie. Count right. me down. Three, two, one. You're released. Oh, he, oh, here we go. Build up a bit of speed off the line there. Sorry. Excellent acceleration. Auto pause hasn't yet turned itself off. Oh, there we go. Now we're in. Now we're going. Creep down to the left. Don't pedal. No pedaling allowed. Creep down to the left, just like before. We're up to 4.9, 5.4. Oh. We're already going faster than we were. Basically, three k's an hour faster than I was before. What does that translate to after the turn? There we go, straight past the mark. Still going, still rolling. And we're still going, we're still moving. They don't want to stop. And that's it. That cone over there represents where Chris stopped when he was riding on the gravel tires. And I'm genuinely astounded by this. This is how much further he's gone on the road tires. I've measured it with my 
tape measure and it's 65 feet 8 inches. 19.8 metres, which is frankly a massive difference, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, that's, it's, well, it's roughly the same, well, it's a, bit, it's a bit further than the world triple jump record. Stats for you everywhere. Long, a long way. And we've repeated this experiment three times and got roughly, give or take, a few inches. The same result each time. It's consistently coming out this much further. I'm yeah. You really am like, amazed at how much further you go. The top speed on the road tyre uh, is around 4 k's an hour faster as you're going down the back, up to 5 actually for the fastest run. Yeah. So yeah, there is a big difference there. I guess it goes to show you just how much well, lower the rolling resistance is on this kind of tyre. But we're going to do another test. We are. Gravel. No real surprises there, but it's interesting nonetheless to see the difference that tyres can make. I do feel it was a little unfair though and slightly biased towards the road tyres. So we've got the gravel tyres back on and we've found some gravel. Same test, only this time I'll be adopting a gravel stance, whatever that is. Watch on out the bike. for that dog poo over there as well. It's, it's quite a bit around here, isn't it? I'm release, release your brakes. Yep. Go. Right, here's the gravel stance, slightly hovering. Oh, the speed is unbelievable! Oh, so fast! Oh, this is the fastest anyone's ever been on gravel. Having rolled down the gravel trail on the gravel tyres, this is where Chris ended up. And, well, his front wheel is handily marked by that leaf that was already there. Now we're going to try it with the road tyres and see what happens. <laughs> Going for 90 PSI, which is just over six bar. As we mentioned earlier in the video, this is representative of a real world pressure in optimum conditions. Whilst we don't have that here today, we're gonna to use it anyway. Right, road tires, 90 PSI, and Ollie's waiting for me at the finishing point of the gravel tire. So I'm gonna to have to track stand and set myself off. Three, two, one. Wow, that's 12 feet. That means road is 12 foot better than gravel. 12 feet further. Right, it's now raining quite a lot, so you're gonna have to forgive my hood. But I was well, sort of a little bit surprised that the road tire went faster than the gravel tire there, or further. Yeah, I mean, we should point out this gravel isn't particularly loose or overly rough, and the road tires do feel a lot faster, but one thing is for sure, there's nowhere near as much confidence off-road. Like, I wouldn't be able to get up the same grassy or gravelly banks on these tyres as I could on the Terrors. And also, when it comes to cornering, you definitely don't feel like you want to push it anywhere near the same. But yeah. they do feel fast. And I guess it does kind of make sense that the road tyre would go further in this situation, in this particular experiment, because the gravel tyre is designed to give you more grip. Yeah. Because you need more traction on loose surfaces. Yeah. And Right now, the, the lack of traction that these tyres are affording you is allowing you to go further. There's less, there is less friction. Well, having performed our three pseudo-scientific experiments, unsurprisingly, the smooth road-specific tyre is, is faster than yeah. the gravel tyre. There is a time and a place for everything though, Ollie. Mm. And today, we didn't test the gravel tyre on any technical gravel whatsoever, where I suspect it would really shine and in fact put the road tyre to shame. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's apples versus oranges, isn't it? You've it got two bit. things that are designed for completely different purposes. And I guess this means we need a, a sequel. We need to go and take out the two tyres and test them on some. Yeah, I'm off that. Free tomorrow, gravel. in fact. <laughs> if you enjoyed this video, do give us a big thumbs up and sub subscribe to the channels if you haven't already done so. And to see more road versus gravel content, click just down there. Yeah, we've got epic gravel in Oman. Ooh, that looked good. <laughs>